Hi, welcome to Toyo Studio. Kendall Kessler here with another Suggestions painting. These are paintings that I do just by kind of folding out the paint and seeing if something comes up and then I go with it. Um, the link, there's a link below to my website that has a whole series of them. I have very many of them and I've just started to demonstrate them. This time I'm going to be a little heavier with the paint. The first two I really let it bleed a lot and this time I'm going to really get more energetic with the paint really put some down. One of my very favorite ones is Raindrops and that one really has the paint loaded big time. So I'm not going to let it bleed as much this time. I'm going to let it just be really vibrant and just put it down. See what happens. As I said before, sometimes I don't really see anything but I usually do. And sometimes I don't think there's anything there until I look at it for a while and then something crops up. I don't sell these because I'm using very inexpensive paint on very inexpensive paper and I wouldn't feel right about selling something that, that cheap and that, um, that delicate. But uh, I do take commissions and I have done commissions of these paintings. And usually larger and with um, much better paint. <laughs> Didn't want an oil paint. This, these, it's a really great thing to do. Most of my paintings are done over many, many layers and take a long, long time. And these are just, uh, just super spontaneous. Uh, I'm very, very eclectic. I like all kinds of art and I do all kinds of things. Um, have done a lot of portrait commissions and other types of commissions. Oh, this is fun. I really like to see lots of real strong paint in a painting and all the different mixtures. Let's see what happens. Not really seen anything yet. Um, usually do three layers. In fact, I uh, I tend to do three layers in a lot of my different kinds of paintings, not all of them. So I'll be after doing this for a while, I'm going to dry it. it just takes a few seconds and get to the second one, but I'm going to do the third one off camera. That's when I really make some decisions about what I've got and it just takes a long time. So that's when I just do it without the camera. I don't want these to be so long. Because uh, I know it can be kind of, or I, I think it can be kind of too much to listen to someone talk for a long time about a painting. I haven't got any purples in here yet, and I do love really pungent colors, so get some purples in. Not really seeing much of anything yet. I don't want to lose the colors I've got. That purple kind of took away a little bit. Really have a thing about green. Um, one time at a competition, the famous artist looked at my work and said, ah, the red-green painter, because painter, I had so many based on those two complementary painters, uh, complementary colors. Whoa, really getting tongue-tied here. And that's very true. Even though I like all colors, I'm really into red and green combinations, playing those two colors off together. And... I really do live to paint, but as I've said before, um, can't take them with me. <laughs> so I work real hard at selling them. And I spend a lot of time on the internet doing that. And I'm in 32 states and six countries, paintings and prints. And it's, it's really great to know that my work is out there. I'd like to get more of it out there. I am. Um, Got lots of artwork and want to see it get around all over the place. All right. I don't know. <laughs> Not really. Let's see if something kind of coming up through there looking like a shape that I might go with. Um, I know it's really, really abstract, but I'm starting to see kind of like a pear shape right through here. So I'm going to go ahead and dry it. And that's what I'm going to base this on, is a painting with a real strong pear. 
and try to really work with some linear qualities to it too. I know I have to talk loud now. It doesn't take too long to do this, but since I used it kind of thick, I'm hoping it's not going to take a lot longer. The first two I did, there was a lot of bleeding, a lot of thin paint, a lot of wet and wet, and that tends to dry pretty quickly. So, hoping that this won't take too long. Like I said, I don't want these YouTubes to drag on and on and on, but I am just going to stick with my more abstract work. I am definitely going to do a time lapse of one of my really, really long paintings that take forever. See how that turns out. That looks like it's probably dry. I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. See what I've got. And I'm going to get a smaller brush now and start to just kind of pull out some areas. I had a medium sized one. It seems to have disappeared. Well, let's see. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just use this one and start to pull out where I'm starting to kind of just see a, a shape of a pear. May not be <laughs> obvious to anybody but me, but um, right through here, it's looking like I can get a kind of like a Bartlett pear or something right through there. Pears always make a, a really nice painting. I know I've sold a number of them and prints and all. I'm going to start to get a lot more round than what I had and just really keeping it very very abstract and the really pretty colors that you see in a Bartlett pear tends to be more yellows and reds unlike the Anjou pear which is a very green pear see that's where the top is going to be right through there and I'm just taking the paint in all different directions at the same time that I'm doing that I'm mindful of keeping it just an abstraction not really it's not my intent to make a painting, a precise painting of a pear. Just want to make it have more form to it without losing what's already there. I certainly could do that, but not in this series. Um, be sure to check out the series. I'm, I'm real proud. There's been a lot of paintings in this series, and there are several of apples that I just think turned out really well. They're really, really strong dynamic paintings. Don't want to lose that real pretty color right through there. Yeah, I'm going to get a lot of real strong red down through the bottom part of the pair. As I said, I really have a thing about red and green, as you can really see that happening in this painting. Uh, I like all the the uh, colors, but um, I just am real partial to those two. I can see why Mace even said that to me. Always nice to have a famous person say something like that to you in a competition. Nice to be able to say that, and it really is true. Um, I've never personally understood why people have favorite colors. Maybe I did it one time. I don't know. I, I, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. I think that's because I just work with so many, like all artists, that if somebody says, well, my favorite color is blue, well, I started thinking, well, wait a minute, cerulean blue, manganese blue, cobalt blue. Which one? How light? How dark? How intense? We just work with so many that it's really kind of a strange question. But, you know, I, I would say I'm, I am partial to certain ones. As I said, red, the red and green. But, uh, you know, I love magenta too. I just think magenta is such a fascinating color because it is so warm and so cool at the same time. Get some more green stuff going through here. And it, it's just, I, I think it's an amazing color. I've got some magenta comb, comb flowers that I'm real pleased that. Be sure to look at my floral section too. I have a very, very strong floral section in my portfolio. Now, there are a number of links. There's one to Etsy, there's to Wix, and there's to um, Pixels. And Pixels is where you can get originals and all kinds of prints and you can get prints on just about anything and then the Wix is, is just originals right now I may work with prints later but right now I just want to just have originals there that's my one site with with them but you can get cups you can get uh, my stuff on yoga mats you can get it on anything and the 
paper prints start at $22. Oh, I want to get more yellow through there. I hope that the colors are turning out as well on the camera as they are here. Um, as I said before, you know, they don't really do that. But um, I do the best I can. I know I'm seeing some really, really strong color contrast right now. And I'm going to get kind of fancy down here and make some squares and things. Say it's sitting on a cloth or whatever. And do stuff with that too. I'm going to get getting close to where I'm going to quit it and then I'm going to go back into it and make it more descriptive but still very abstract. Still very um, something to be looked at for its own sake, not a pair that you can eat. Uh, all art is an abstraction from life, even photography. Um, I'm, photographs are not really as real as people think, and now that's not a great art form and everything, but it really, they really are kind of abstract too. I mean, think about it. If a uh, sunset, a photograph of sunset were truly accurate, then that looking at that sun ought to burn your eye right out and of course it doesn't because it's an abstraction taken from nature and it's not the thing itself it can't possibly be that I have to agree with Monet who said Claude Monet who said you know all you really get is a naive impression because colors are always just constantly changing and that is that's very wise he really realized that as he was trying to capture all these things it's like you, you can't really do it Every 15 minutes, the colors were changing. That's why I did that cathedral over and over again as the light changed. And they're just beautiful examples of his tremendous understanding and ability to really just see colors, warm and cool colors, in front of him. Well, anyway, I think I'm going to stop it right there. There's some things I really like, and I'm going to keep them in the next layer. But it's, it's going to change. I'm definitely going to make the pair a little stronger and uh, make the space just a little bit stronger. Thank you for watching. The link to the final painting will be in the description as long with, along with links to my other websites.